One of the things that you'll quickly realize building AI enabled applications or AI agents is that these large language model providers like OpenAI, Claude, Gemini, Mistral, all of them, they really want to lock you into using their specific provider as well as a lot of their specific tooling. So I'm a Go programmer and I really wanted to build some AI stuff in Go, um, but not get locked into using one of the sole providers, you know, not lock in a bunch of stuff with OpenAI and having to use their SDKs. I wanted a provider agnostic way to kind of plug and play a bunch of different providers um, and have a sort of agnostic interface to be able to do that. So today I'm very excited to show you a project that I've been working on called Agent API. This is a whole toolkit of different Go libraries that are provider agnostic. In other words, it gives you a sort of single interface, a flat plane that is implemented for a bunch of these different providers to make it very easy to plug and play. There's a bunch of stuff that I have going on in here and I want to talk about it, but uh, please keep in mind that a lot of this is a very proof of concept right now. Um, this is basically devlog zero, but I would love if anybody went and checked it out, tried it out. Um, please let me know, give it a star, like, comment, and you know, do all the things with this video. Um, but let's show it off. Let's actually take a look at how it works. So here I have a very small Go program, just some boilerplate. We have a context and a slog logger. This is the new structured logger in the Go standard library, which is great. So first thing we wanna do is bootstrap a provider. And again, a provider is just anything like OpenAI, Olama, Claude, that can provide LLM inference to be able to power an AI agent or do some tool calling or whatever. So let's use Olama to get started. So let's call this provider and we want the Olama library from Agent API and that brings that in. We can then call new provider and we can grab some provider options. So we can say Olama.providerOps and we can actually bootstrap some of the options in here. There we go. So we are giving it the logger, we are giving it the base URL and the port to my local Olama running here uh, locally. Okay, so now at this point, we want to tell the provider which model to use. So we can call use model and we give it the context and we grab the models from Olama and we want Quen 25 latest. That's a good one to go with for the demo here. So we have a provider that can give us LLM inference. And now we can use that provider with the sort of agent framework in Agent API to be able to go and do something with it. So we want to uh, give something, maybe we could just call this my agent. And this is going to be agent from the core package. And we want to call new agent. And inside of here, we need to have the new agent config which in itself is a struct. And in that struct, we want to grab the provider, which is just gonna be the provider. We want the logger, which again is just gonna be the logger. And then we need the system prompt, which we can just say something simple, like you are a helpful assistant. So now at this point, we have an agent that's been bootstrapped with a provider, and we can actually then go and do something with it. So we can call my agent.run, and dot run is sort of where we initiate the agentic loop, or in this case, really more a one shot, um, that is gonna actually go and do some LLM inference to then give you something back. So we want to initialize this with response and error. We are gonna call agent run with the context, and then we're gonna give it some user prompt. We can just say like, why is the sky blue? And then we also need to give it a stop condition function. And there is a default stop condition function, but you could also provide your own if you wanna look for a certain phrase or you wanna tee up the agent with some uh, special codec to be able to look for. Um, in this case, we can just provide the agent default stop condition there. And this will just finish the agent up uh, when it's done, when it, when it signals that it's stopped. And with that error, everybody's favorite thing in Go, we want to check for an error if that happens. Um, otherwise, we can just print line the response, which is actually a list of the messages that went back and forth from the agent, which is the essentially whole conversation with that provider. 
And because we know there's really just going to be one message in here, we can just call that one. And we need to just say message.content and grab that. The message here is actually defined in the core APIs. So again, that's another part of that sort of flat plane of a interface that all providers can implement to then give you that plug and play capability. All right, enough talking. Let's go run um, main.go. That's going to use Olama here on my laptop. It's going to send that message to Quen 2.5, and we'll see a return response here in a second. All right, so it said the sky appears blue, blah, 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 blah. So it did a thing. That's great. Now, let's actually experiment with that plug and play capability. All we need to do here is change the actual provider. And instead of Olama, let's use OpenAI, which is, again, in the agent API organization. Um, we don't actually provide those options there. And this is complaining because we don't want to provide an Olama provider options. We want the OpenAI provider options. And when we use model, we want to actually use one of the GPT models. So we tell the provider to use GPT 4.0. And the rest of this is just the same. All we changed was the provider and giving that provider into the agent. Um, everything compiles, everything is fine. This provider implements that interface, so it just works. Let's go run main.go again, and we can see that this will be much faster um, as GPT-4.0 will give us an answer almost instantly. Now, let's talk about tool calling, which is an all-important piece of building AI agents. Tool calling is essentially a way for an LLM to tell your code that it wants to call a function that you've given it uh, within your prompts or something. So in this example, we have a very simple calculator tool. This calculator takes a context and it takes the args for calculator params here. Calculator params is pretty simple. It just takes an option string um, and then a and B. And then also for this, I've hard coded a JSON schema. More on the JSON schema part in the next example. But for now, we've hard coded it in just a constant string. So we give it the title of calculator, the description of a single calculator on ints um, with the property, the first operand, the uh, not the first operand, the second operand, and then the actual operation, which is one of add or multiply and then we require the operation a and b and if you're not familiar with tool calling the schema part of this is very very important because this is what defines for the llm uh, how it should use that tool what kind of json it should provide back to your code and then how it can serialize and deserialize that correctly including error handling and validation but again for now let's just hard code this in so there's our raw json schema and our calculator params, which we can marshal some JSON into, and then our actual calculator function with a very simple switch on add and multiply. So inside of our code here, um, this is that same, you know, why is the sky blue example here, but we wanna be able to provide a tool to the agent to actually use. So the first thing we wanna do is take that calculator function and actually wrap it in a way that can be used by agent API and by your agent. So um, what I'm gonna call this is just wrapped calc and we need an error. And we're grabbing the types from the core types in the agent API and we are gonna call wrap tool function and we are just gonna give it the calculator. I won't get into too many details on how the wrapping works here, but essentially it ensures that what you're providing it has the right kind of arguments that can be serialized and deserialized by your agent when it actually calls the tool. Uh, we can check for an error here as well. We just panic on error since this is an example mostly. So next what we wanna do is actually add that tool to our agent. So we can do an error again. We grab my agent and we add tool. Add tool is the sort of interface for adding that wrapped function uh, from the previous call to actually add it to your agent to be usable again by your LLM. So uh, we give it a tool that we want to name, and this is a calculator. The description of the tool that we're gonna give the agent performs basic arithmetic on ints. Didn't spell that right. There we go. Uh, and then we want to say uh, the wrapped tool function, which is gonna be the wrapped calc, and those types match, so I won't complain. And then the JSON schema, 
which is going to be the bytes of our JSON schema. And again, that's just the hard coded bits there. Perfect. So now at this point, our agent should have the tool. Uh, again, we can check for error, simply just panic in this example case. And now when we run our agent, it'll have access to that tool. So let's actually do something interesting. Let's say, what is, I don't know, 9876 times 1234 or something, some math that it should use. And just for the sake of simplicity, uh, let's say um, you must use the calculator tool. And that's just a bit of prompt engineering for the sake of this example to ensure that it's actually going to use our calculator tool because sometimes GPT-40 um, is a little ambitious and just does the math in its head without actually calling the tool. Uh, we do the same thing with the response. We just grab that last message and print it out, but we'll see some logs fly by as well uh, where it actually does that. Let's clear this, go run main.go. It's going to go and give that message to the tool. And I forgot this little piece here. We actually want the len of the response minus one, just grabbing grabbing that last message. Um, and that last message is actually gonna be um, where it <laughs> displays the result that it got for that tool call. So uh, let's run that again. And we should actually see the result of, the result of times this is that number. And up here, we can actually see where um, I just have a print line where it's inside of the wrapped function and it's actually calling that tool call. And here inside of this print line statement as well, we could see the tool call specifically for the calculator func. So uh, we can kind of validate that just from reversing that a bit, which is very cool. So one of the things that kind of stinks about this is that we have just raw JSON schema in here, which is not very good in my opinion. And rather we would want to be able to build programmatically a JSON schema. Um, so there's a library that I built called GSV or the Go Schema Validator inside of Agent API, which can enable us to do that programmatically. So what we want to do is instead of just a normal string type, we want to use the GSV schema types. So we want to get GSV, and this is going to be a string schema. This is going to be a GSV int schema, and that's also an int schema. And why don't we just make these pointers? This parameters is a schema validator, as well as being able to store the values when we actually grab the, uh, the, the JSON that the LLM for the tool call is going to provide for us. This is very inspired by Zod, if you're familiar from the whole TypeScript realm, which can do the schema validation, um, but can, in, at least in TypeScript, um, infer types and build those objects from it, which you can't really do in Go. So I've had to kind of smash a couple ideas together inside of GSV, but you'll see kind of how it works down here. So in the actual calculator now, uh, what we want to do is you'll notice a couple of problems where it's, it's kind of freaking out now, where it's like, oh my gosh, like, cannot infer this from that because now these are actual struct types. Um, so what we want to do is we can actually grab the value itself from um, the operation. This also returns an okay variable, which uh, essentially is denoting that that value has been populated. So we can say if not okay, uh, we can just panic operation not okay. And we can do basically the same thing for the rest of these where we give them uh, where we grab their value. So now we're actually grabbing the values off of GSV for those specific fields um, in those arguments when they are passed in. Um, but maybe instead of panicking here, it probably would be better to actually return the error so that the LLM um, can actually act on that if it needed to inside of its agentic loop. So we have our error handling there. The rest of this stays the same, where essentially we are just using those values now that we've grabbed off of GSV to actually do the calculation. You'll notice now that you know we actually need to provide the bytes of the JSON schema to the add tool function, and we can use GSV to compile a programmatic schema uh, based on that. So what I want to do is I want to say you know my schema, and this is just going to be a pointer to the calculator uh, params. And then from there, that's essentially a GSV-like schema with the fields being a GSV string and int schemas. And what we can do is actually build out programmatically the schema from there. So we could say GSV. So we could say my schema uh, dot uh, operation. And we can say that this is equal to, and we're initializing this at this point, a GSV dot string. 
and then we can give it a description where we can say that this is uh, the uh, operation to perform. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Uh, we could say one of add multiply just to prompt that there. Okay, we can also do schema dot a equals gsv dot int, and that int uh, can have a description as well. You sort of get the point. It is very Zod like. And then we can do the same for B and we call this the second operand. And we can do all different kinds of things with this. We can do the max. We could do a minimum and chain it off of there. We could say that this is an optional field and that will be validated by GSV when we actually grab that from the LLM itself. Now, very importantly is we need to take that and actually compile it or grab sort of the whole schema string values off of GSV um, to then pass it into the wrap tool func. So we can just say this is schema and we can give this the error and we can say GSV compile schema and we can give it my schema. And then we also need to give it a compile ops from GSV itself. So gsv.compile ops. And inside of here, um, we need to give it a few things, which are kind of the overarching metadata for the schema itself. So schema title is calculator and schema description. There we go, schema description is a simple calculator on ints. And then we can provide the rest of that there. Oh, and this is complaining because it wants a pointer. All right, so now at this point we have um, the compiled schema. Uh, again, we can grab this and just panic uh, if error. So this schema is now of type bytes essentially, which we can then just come down here and JSON schema, we can just provide the schema from the actual compiled ops. And that will be all happy. And at this point, we've sort of end-to-end -end replaced that big, you know, nasty constant string with a programmatic approach using some of these declarative methods here in GSV um, dynamically to actually enable that to work. So let's get out of here. Let's again go run main.go, and that's going to go through the whole thing. We can see the tool call itself happened again. It validated those arguments from the LLM and it returned the result correctly. So that in a nutshell is Agent API, at least today. It's actively a work in progress. Again, this is like devlog zero, um, but very excited for where this is headed. Um, and I you know, do believe that Go is an excellent place to be building um, agents and AI enabled applications, um, especially just given how much backend code is written in Go. Um, I want to be able to take advantage of tool calling and some really cool LLM provider capabilities on top of this functionality. So please go to github.com slash agent API. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of links in the description. Join the Discord. Please like, uh, comment on this video, go and star the repos. And most importantly, please give it a try and let me know what you think. If it's stupid, let me know. I mean, I want to make this like a good place, uh, a good open source library for people in the Go community to use. Um, and there's a bunch of other things I'm working on actively, you know, trying different things out, seeing what works, seeing what sticks. Um, you know, it's just fun. It's just in the open source. So go check it out. Um, yeah, join the Discord and uh, let me know what you think. Thank you, everybody. And I will see you in the next devlog for this. Peace out.